You may have heard of a small company out of South Korea. They're called Samsung. They make occasionally TVs and phones, but did you know they make laptops? In fact, they made one of my favorite laptops of 2017, and for 2018, they're back again with a Notebook 9 15 inch. Today, I'm going to tell you what's new about it, what's cool, and whether or not you should get it. Stay tuned. All right, before we get started, if you want the full review of this laptop from last year, make sure you go check that out. Now, this was one of my favorite laptops, but before I go into all the specs and stuff, I just wanna talk a little bit about who this is for, because I think this is super important. I know there's a lot of you guys out there who are enthusiasts and they just want everything. So this is a very good laptop for lawyers, for doctors, for students, and maybe for even journalists and professionals like that. That is people who take a lot of notes, people who type a lot, work in Excel, who browse the web. If you're a hardcore gamer, you want to tune one, you want a pen device, this is not yours. But I really like it for what it does. In fact, there's very few devices that does what this does as well as this one. So here it is, Samsung Notebook 9 15 inch. So this is a $1,400 laptop or Ultrabook as they call it. It is 15 inch. Specifically, it's a actual 15 inch laptop versus 15.6. We'll talk about more about the display shortly. Now, what makes this laptop so interesting is it weighs 2.8 pounds or 1.3 kilograms. That's very light for a 15 inch. By comparison, a Dell XPS 15 is well over four pounds. So this is significantly lighter. Now, the materials I use is kind of this weird metal hybrid stuff and it feels like a combo of metal and plastic. Our videographer, Mark Wim, was pointing out that he thought it feels cheap, but that's just because it's a very kind of hollow feeling device and it's very light. Um, if we turn here to the bottom, forgive that sticker, this is a factory sample, so you wouldn't get that in yours. Bottom though is pretty clean. You do have these screws. You can remove this entire panel and replace the SSD if you would like to. Um, you also have your speakers here on the bottom. Very good audio for what they are, the bottom firing speakers, but they actually resonate pretty well and they reflect back up. They sound almost like top firing speakers, so actually pretty good audio here. Not the best in the world, but much better than most in this class, and I think that's important. Let's check out the ports here. So on the left-hand side, you do have a barrel charger for, well, recharging the device. Now it's an AC wall charger, pretty small in size. But this also does charge by USB type C, so that's pretty convenient. You have a USB type A port here, so nice sort of legacy, 3.1. You also have a type C port I was just mentioning. So you can charge the device, you can use this for data, you can use it for display output. This is full Thunderbolt 3 with four PCIe lanes. I showed this last year. Uh, I have connected this up, at least last year's model, to the Razer Core, and use this as a full on gaming laptop. You can totally do that, and it's just kind of cool that they have that there. Of course, you have the headphone jack as well. Turning to the right-hand side, you have a micro SD slot. I would still prefer a full SD, but you know, I guess that's forgivable. Uh, you have another USB type A port as well as, well, another one. One's 3.1 and one's just a regular one, so you can use it for power and all that kind of stuff. And a full HDMI port. So as you can see from the port selection here, this is definitely geared towards business people who'll still need that full port as well. Unfortunately, there's no full Ethernet jack, but this is a pretty thin laptop, so you don't really have room for it. And what makes this laptop kind of nice, and it does look a little bit like a MacBook, but it does have that nice one hand opening. And that's partly because the display. So let's talk about that now. Really nice Samsung panel here, full 15 inch, not 15.6, but an actual 15 inch. It is 16 by nine aspect ratio. That's a full HD display. It is also non-touch. I know a lot of people, they immediately want this device to be a touch, but it's not. Uh, the result, though, it's a very thin panel. It's very light, and that's why you get to open it one-handed, of course. It is, uh, they call it HDR. I'm doing it in quotes there, uh, just because it's not really an HDR display, but it kind of is. So you talk about 350 nits of brightness for indoor use, which is actually pretty good. And it does have an outdoor mode, which goes up to 500 nits. It also has a video ability to basically recognize HDR, and you're getting really good contrast. Speaking of, you can kind of see the blacks here are really good. It's kind of OLED-ish, I would say. One of the better LCDs on the market. It gets around 97 sRGB for color accuracy, which is pretty good, and around 76, 77% for Adobe. So a little bit on the you know, upper mid range for color accuracy, pretty good, but not the best on the market. On the top here, you have the web camera along with some microphones. This does have, for this year, 
far field microphone array. This is what we're seeing with all these new premium laptops now. Everybody is doing this Cortana thing in for some Alexa as well, but they're really improving the microphones on these devices, which seems trivial, but as these devices become more smart and all that kind of stuff and people use it for other uses, that is actually very important. Turning to the keyboard, we have a nice full set here, and I really like this keyboard. It was one of my favorite from last year. Now, some people have described it as being kind of mushy. They're not wrong. That doesn't make it bad, but if you're like a real stiff travel, this is probably not your keyboard, but I really like using this. It just feels really nice. It's soft to the touch. It is backlit too, and that's kind of interesting because there are silver keys here, so you're not gonna get as much contrast, but they have a little trick. So instead of using a white backlight, which is what almost everybody does in the industry. They have a greenish backlight, which looks different, but I actually kind of like it. I think it works pretty well. You do have to enable that manually though. Turning to the upper right hand corner, you have the power button, nothing unique, pretty flush, nice design. And you have a couple of LEDs there as well for both charging and letting you know when a device is on. Turning to the trackpad, always a controversial aspect with me, uh, but good news here, Samsung makes one of the best trackpads, believe it or not, on a Windows PC. So this is a very large trackpad as you can see here compared to my hands at least. It's very nice, it's glass, excellent travel, very smooth, and they do use precision drivers. So, hey, Samsung nails this. It's, uh, it's one of the best trackpads on the market. And Samsung also has the return of their fingerprint reader, which they build into the deck here. Kind of a cool design. And if you've seen my Lenovo reviews recently, I dinged them for their subpar fingerprint readers. Luckily, Samsung doesn't have that issue. Very good performance here, very quick, just kind of like they use on their phones. All right, let's talk about processors. So this ships with the Intel 8th generation Core i7 8550U. One of the most common processors that we're finding in premium ultrabooks these days that goes up to a little over four gigahertz in speed it is quad core still in the 15 watt range though but a very good processor now there are two models of this 15 inch there's one that has the mx150 gpu in there which is what this one is and there's one that's cheaper for 11.99 that one does not have dedicated gpu in there that has two gigabytes of video memory and now I know a lot of people are going to ask this. There's actually two versions of the MX150, and I have the answer for you. This is the 25 watt version. That is, is the better one. The Huawei MateBook X Pro, I believe I'm saying that right, uh, actually has the MX150, but that is the lower 10 watt version. That means when compared to Geekbench, you'll get around 9,000 points better with this version versus the one that's in the Huawei. And it's comparable, I would say, to a NVIDIA 960M that came out last year. So it's a pretty good GPU. You're not going to really do full on gaming with this, but you can do some gaming with it. And it's obviously very good for graphics. It's giving you an extra boost when browsing the web, watching video, and doing all those kind of things. Now, when it comes to RAM, you're talking 16 gigabytes. And get this, it's DDR4. And a lot of people like to point that out too. Yes, this actually has DDR4 RAM. So very fast, very quick, very modern. When it comes to storage, you get 256 or 512 gigabytes. And Samsung, well, you should be surprised you're using a Samsung SSD here. So it is the PM961. So it's not the newer PM981, but you can throw that in here if you would like to. So feel free. The 961 though is a heck of a performer. I think for most people it should be good, especially the value here. And finally, rounding all that out is a nice 75 watt battery, which that's a pretty big battery for this laptop, especially considering it's under three pounds. So now they're saying around 19 hours of battery life, which obviously is a little ridiculous, but real world usage, you could definitely push this towards 10 hours, even higher, maybe 11 or 12 hours. This is gonna last you all day. And now part of that's because it has a full HD display, but the combination of that Intel eighth generation processor along with that large battery, a great combo for those of you who are road warriors and just need longevity. And let's turn a little bit here to software. So Samsung does load up quite a few of their own apps on there. Luckily, they are store apps, that is UWP, so you can quickly uninstall them. So if you look at Samsung settings, you have things like auto booting, silent mode, USB charging. So you can turn those ports on and off to charge your devices. Uh, look at power management, battery life extender, extends battery life so it doesn't charge the battery all the way up. You can see here under the display mode, we have other options including auto. So it's gonna adjust it basically on the content, which is kind of nice. You also have dynamic, it'll be a little bit more HDR. You have outdoor mode, I mentioned that earlier, 500 nits of brightness, so that goes really bright if you're outside, you wanna just really get a lot of brightness. It will zap your battery, of course, but that is the uh, the trade-off. And you have video HDR. Again, not true Dolby Vision HDR, it's HDR-ish, but it's kind of cool to have, and it looks great on this display. 
There's also a keyboard backlight so you can control how long they stay on. You do have options for the camera. Look at this beauty camera, in case you're wondering what that is. If you ever use a Samsung phone, uh, I kind of just, I don't know who uses this. It's kind of hilarious though. When you turn on your camera, it will add like lipstick and beautify you. <laughs> it's hilarious. I'm not sure it's uh, necessary, but you can turn it on or off. It's off by default, of course, so don't worry there. You also have quick settings. So this is kind of neat. This is a little addition that they made. You can put shortcuts here. And when you come down to the taskbar, you can see now you have quick shortcuts to all those things. You can add or remove them. It's sort of like the built-in Windows 10 Action Center, just one for Samsung. And a couple other built-in things. One is voice notes. So this is a sophisticated voice recording app. Again, if you're a lawyer or someone who takes depositions or something, this is a really cool thing. It's gonna record your conversations. You can add bookmarks and put notes in there and all that kind of stuff. Again, a lot of people won't need this, but if you're a business person, it's super useful. You also have Studio Plus, which you can use for creating video files and all that kind of stuff. Kind of a neat little addition. And finally, I like this. This is called Samsung Security. So they took this out of last year's model where they was in a separate area. Now it's its own section. So they have a secret screen, which basically is going to blur your screen so people can't really read what's on there. You have my favorite though, security cam. So when the device is locked and someone tries to unlock it and fails, the next time you log in, it's going to email you that that was a failed attempt and it also snapped their photo so you know who was trying to hack into your computer. All right, so let's bring it all in. So at the beginning of this video, I mentioned who this laptop is for and that still holds true. If you're a student, a lawyer, business person, someone who just writes a lot, this is really your ideal laptop. And I say that as someone for myself as well. I mean, I love the Surface Book 2 and it's pretty cool. I could play Destiny 2 when I should be working, but Honestly, for my job and what I need, this is really the ideal laptop. If you think about it, it's got a great Core i7 processor, quad core, you get that nice GPU in there. Again, not for gaming level, but it's going to definitely give you a boost. You have a lot of future proofing here for ports, including that full Thunderbolt 3. The display is very good. It's only full HD and I get that. I, I do feel like we're at the point where they could have put a higher resolution display in and still get really good battery life, but you know, it's fine. I, I don't actually mind this display, to be honest. It's really good. And that battery life of 10 plus hours is really kind of nice to have in a device that weighs less than three pounds. And that's the other benefit here. This is very light and it just, it's fun to carry around. You also get a really good trackpad. You're going to get a really good keyboard. And for heat too, it stays very cool because there's plenty of space in this device. The fans don't really get loud. You get a lot of air whooshing around in this, so it's going to stay cool. Overall, if you're looking for a really good productivity laptop that doesn't give you the pen and two-in-one stuff of the other devices for a pretty good price, I say the Samsung Notebook 9 15 inch is a good choice. If you like something a little bit smaller, they do make a 13 inch version as well. So there's a quick look at the Samsung Notebook 9 15 inch. Now this is available right now if you like to get it, but Samsung only sells a certain market, so that's gonna be up to you to figure out. If you want more information though, you can go into the description below and check out our links there. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, take care everybody.